Konnichiwa, y'all, and welcome to the 10 at 10 for November 14th of 2023. I'm Matt. This is my brother, Tim. We got a great 10 at 10 for you today. Y'all, hit that like button. Make sure to shop today at 10 a.m. We've got an amazing assortment of trees getting listed. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on MrMaple.com. We're going to talk about 10 today. There's actually 20, so check out your weekly email, and you can actually subscribe for that if you're not subscribed to it on our website. All right. Let's get into it. We've got some awesome trees here today. We don't ever stop doing these. People are like, when does a 10 at 10 stop? It never stops. We keep going with the 10 at 10s always. And now we've been having Thursdays, so it, it just adds to the fun, guys. Uh, all winter long, expect us to be dropping some amazing plants every Tuesday. And hopefully we'll keep bringing some Thursdays. We'll see about those. Thursdays are still optional. But every Tuesday at 10, you're going to be getting an amazing assortment of plants. So, y'all, let's start out today with these Benny Sheehan's. These things are some large three gallons right now, y'all some great sizes on these trees. I mean, right now, they're gonna be bending to fit in that six foot box because these things, I'm ever been a six foot, and as you can see, they're much taller than that. It's the Purple Smoke Japanese Maple, selected by Harold Johnson from Alabama. He's 5'11 and three quarters, by the way. He's trying to get an inch in on you. Don't, don't listen to him. Hey, I'm not trying to get an inch. I'm trying to get a quarter inch. <laughs> <laughs> Every bit of six foot, 5'11 and three quarters, buddy, okay? So Purple Smoke is extremely heat tolerant, performs really well out there in the landscape. And this is just an amazing tree. It gives you this sort of red, variegated look to it. And it really has some really nice shades of yellows to oranges in the fall. Ah, Benny Sheehan, Purple Smoke, such a cool name. I know I've said this before. This song, maybe it's the Purple Smoke. I think of Jimi Hendrix music when I see this plant. It is incredible. It is really cool, that purple, that, that weird variegation it has going on on it. It really stands out. Excellent sizes. These three gallons are huge. I mean, these are a great size. We joke, we often use Tim for size example. Uh, me and Brian, we make everything look small. So Tim is right at six foot, 5'11 and three quarters. And, and shoes, you can see that he's a good six foot measurement for these trees. So you can see how big they're going to be in the ground for you. Uh, you know, awesome plant to be growing. And again, some great size plants. Some great size, three gallons on those. Y'all, which side of the table you want to start on this morning? What you got down there, homie? We got some green twinkles. Boom, green twinkles, y'all. This is another Talon Buckholz introduction. Great plant. Uh, I had this one in my garden, and it's an exceptional plant. A dense, compact form. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of something like Matthew and the way the broom grows. Like I don't think it's a broom, but it has that density to it with a more heavy Matson Murray style leaf. I like the leaf. It's got a different texture to it. I mean, it has something almost like a green strap, but not. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just a little more rounded. It's almost that. like a lace leaf, but not. Like I mean, it just kind of mounds out. Yeah, it, it stands out. And that's the thing that makes this tree pretty awesome. It does go to some nice red fall color. It is a green dwarf. And we're seeing a little bit of that fall color right now, but this tree just densens up and thickens with age. So I've got a great one of these in the ground at my house. It's probably three feet tall. Gosh, maybe four foot wide right now. I've got it in the ground near an earth fire. Uh, just looks great. I actually got a, a pink princess going on near it for texture and color. Awesome, small, compact plant. And I think one that can really add a lot of texture into the garden for sure. Looks great next to lace leaves as well. All right, man, we'll switch it up. We'll switch out here to my side. Got some big one gallon Acer Palmatum Nishikigawas. Y'all, the pine bark Japanese maple is extremely popular. It's popular for bonsai. It's popular for use in the landscape. It gets pine barking, which gives it a very aged appearance out there in the garden. Yeah, this one's quintessential for bonsai. Uh, now you can create from these, like they are grafted. I always let people know it's a good medium sized graft. They're grafted about right here. Uh, so not super low, not super high. Works great this for a bonsai, or you can create material from this. I think the quintessential way to do it is actually to buy a grafted tree, put it in the landscape, let it get some size to it. Air layer, do rooted cuttings from that for your bonsai material. It's gonna give you more bonsai material, but you're also gonna have a better tree for the landscape because of it. Best way to do it in my opinion. Uh, Nishikigawa, one of the best uh, fall color Japanese maples of them all too. Check out our top 100 series on the best fall color maples to see where Nishikigawa comes in. I do love it, I've had it be electric reds, electric purples, sometimes yellows and oranges infused are there. It's a showstopper, not only for that bark, but also for that fall interest. I think we often focus on the attribute of a Japanese maple, like the pine bark. And we forget it's a Japanese maple that has an amazing fall color. It's on. got a lot of other good things going on about it too. So this tree's gonna add a lot to your landscape and then have that extra feature of that pine bark, which will make it look like a 100 year old tree in 10, 15 years. That just makes this tree Pretty awesome out there in the landscape. It gives you that bonsai aesthetic, which people are always trying to get more and more of that feel in their garden. Awesome one, Nishikigawa. All right, let's switch back down here. 
Guys, get a Taro Yama for yo mama. Y'all, Taro Yama, this is in that Makawa, almost Shishigashira style family. It's got the twisting leaves to it. It, it is, has more of that, I'd say that thicker trunk to it. It's more like an aminum style growth to it. And it is just an amazing little dwarf. Yeah, you get some twisting foliage going on. Uh, you get a little bit of what I like about Kurnajishi. You get some of the things I like about Angel the Prince. Angel the Prince actually reminds me of Teriyama a little. Now, one of the fun things about this one, you get a pink spring color as well. So you get a blushing of pink over this in the spring. You can actually get some pink white colors if you give it early morning sun, late day shade. Typically gonna be an emerald green, that larger twisting leaf. Teriyama fits in great with the Makawa family though. It looks awesome with them. Uh, amazing compact, dense habit to it. Does grow a little bit faster than Makawa, typically at around six to eight foot in 10 years. So a little bit more getting out there than Makawa. An amazing plant to be growing though. I've had yellows and oranges this in the fall. Some years I've had bold red. It really just keeps changing a ton. Yeah, this is one of my favorite trees that's not produced enough. And we were out there at Buckholtz and Buckholtz Nursery and we are like, you know, how many of those do you do in a year? And he's like, maybe 30 or 40. I'm like, we do more than that at Mr. Maple. We got to get this thing in numbers because this tree's amazing. All right, y'all, next up we got Ariadne. Ariadne is a reticulated Japanese maple by our friend at Esfeld Nursery in Holland. Uh, it has veins all throughout the leaves that gives this tree something really extra special. The foliage itself is a little more serrated, and so the texture itself is really different from any of the Ghost series. Yeah, big leaf to this one, heavily divided, uh, but it stands out great with the Ghost series. So think about pairing this one with some of the amazing reticulated trees. I particularly like this one with the original peaches and cream. Looks outstanding. Ariadne, an amazing Japanese maple. You know, we refer to it as ghost style variegation, but in Europe they refer to it as the reticulatum group. And uh, a great plant to be growing. There's so many cool reticulated plants out there. I think the ghost series really opened people up to what those could be. Ariadne stands out on its own though. Awesome plant. Like Tim was saying, introduction by our friend Corvin Gelder and Esfeld Plantinium. And uh, maybe the, the goddess of the maze here. What do you think? Such a cool plant. Uh, I like it because it can give you some nice coral pinks in the early spring on that reticulated style of irrigation, then going to those creamy whites. Uh, it is one that stands out and is definitely a rock star in the garden. All right, what do we got next over here? Another one for those bonsai enthusiasts. Y'all, we got some Acer Palmatum Shinda Sojo. Makes me think about we went to a nursery and had Shinda Sojo and they were trying to tell us how it was different. <laughs> Shin de Sojo means improved de Sojo. I've never seen Shindy Sojo in the trade, but Shin de Sojo, an amazing plant. Uh, this one, a little bit faster get, getting out there than de Sojo. Uh, de Sojo uh, is actually the original. Shin de Sojo is a seedling from that. Shin means improved. Now, the main difference, a little bit different colors, not much, and faster growing. Yeah, I mean, these things give you some intense colors in the spring. The thing I like about Shin de Sojo and their styles is they announce the coming of the seasons. In the spring, you've got this bright, bright red. Then it goes to a green during the summer, gives you that kind of lively feel during the summer. And then during the fall, you get that bright, 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 throw another bright in there, red fall <laughs> color. And it is electric. It's one that's hard to tell the difference between the spring color and the fall color because it's so intense. And because of that, this is a tree that's gonna grab people's attention in the spring, and in the fall. Now, always popular for bonsai. Uh, again, you can put this one in the ground. These are grafted. You can air layer from it to create material. It's a great way to start one out to get one in the ground. Uh, Sinda Sojo, I, I think probably one of the best spring colored maples of them all. Really just symbols that, you know, it's that symbol of spring is coming out there. This along with Katsura make a great pairing. All right, we got a dwarf lace leaf here for, lace leaf here for you. We got Scarlet Princess. Same thing you'll see sometimes referred to as Ash of Scarlet Princess. We got this from Tom and Nancy Ash. This was a witch's broom found in the cultivar Crimson Queen. Now, great plant found down there in Wilmington, North Carolina as a broom. One of the more durable brooms on a lace leaf. A lot of brooms on lace leaves don't do too well. Really good grower. This one goes five through nine and uh, just a showstopper. Changes the color a little bit too. You get a little bit more of a pink red on this one sometimes than Crimson Queen. Quintessential for the container garden, the small conifer garden. And because it's a broom, it makes it even more compact. It does. It has a slight weeping habit with more of a mounding kind of shape to it with that lace leaf foliage. It's everything you look for in a Crimson Queen, but more dense and compact. The colors can get a little more richer on this as well, which is pretty awesome. You can get some intense shades of red. And for me, this is a fun little dwarf uh, lace leaf Japanese maple. 
as one of the few witches broom lace leaf Japanese maples that actually, I think, makes a tree for the landscape that can grow and do well for people. This one works great in the container. Um, it kind of arches up, which is unique. So a lot of the growth will kind of arch up, giving it a little bit more of a broom look to it. Uh, really nice plant though. And because of that habit, it's a lot smaller. Typically three by three, even in a 10 year period, giving it a much smaller footprint, which works great for a small conifer garden. You've got miniature conifers. You wanna put some deciduous splash in there. Think about Scarlet Princess as an answer to that. So guys, next up, we've got Acer Promatum eye candy. This is a selection by Talon Buckholz. It was a seedling from Alpenwise, and it has a little more intense colors on it. It's got that Higashiyama reticulation that is really special and unique. Go check out our spring video we did. Tim did an excellent breakdown on one of these in great color in the garden. Uh, Acer Promatum eye candy. Not Ramanji, kind of a play. You know, Talon likes to play with words there. And uh, eye candy, meaning this is one you're definitely going to be looking at. It is beautiful. It has that interesting variegation to it. It's almost more of a white pink version of Higashiyama with some larger leaves. Uh, I recommend leafing this one out very slowly. And people say, what do you mean by that? Well, giving it a high canopy, getting it some shade, not putting it in direct full sun so it's going to leaf out very quickly. Sometimes you can't control spring, but you can do things that give trees every advantage to leaf out slowly. And uh, if you leaf this one out slowly, you'll get your best colors on it. Really a showstopper. Normally great oranges and reds in the fall as well. Great plant to be growing, eye candy. Awesome one for the container too. Yeah, this is an awesome tree. Like Matt said, leave it out slowly and you're gonna get the best out of this tree. Young trees won't show as much uh, variegation if you keep them in a garage or something. Make sure they're outside to experience those colds during the winter and don't over fertilize this in the spring because that will give you the very best variegation. Awesome plant, consistent, love it. Acer palmatum eye candy. There's some big ones at Buckholtz Nursery, so go watch those walkthroughs if you wanna see some beasts. Guys, next up, we got another great compact dwarf, lace leaf type. This one's a Matsumure. I think a lot of these would pair really well on the table today. We've got Sherwood Elfin. Now, this one comes from Paul Lowe uh, down there at Mill Creek. And Tim and I actually went and hung out with him a little bit last spring. It was really fun to go and visit them. Um, amazing people. He's been doing this for over 40 years, over 50 years. He's a, a uh, kind of one of those protégés of Harold Johnston. And I think one of his best introductions, Sherwood Elfin. Yeah, Sherwood Elfin, I mean, Paul is such an amazing guy. He's got such a history in plants in the deep south. So friendly, Spent Japanese we just maple. sat on the porch for like probably two hours and talked to them. And he's introduced so many cool plants. And Sherwood Elfin, like Matt said, I think this is one of our favorites of his introductions. It's a slow growing Matsumuri that has a shape almost like a lace leaf. Mm -hmm. And so it's got a leaf more like a burgundy lace, but a, a shape more like a crimson queen. And it's low and spreading, but it's a slow growing dwarf reaching about three feet in height by about four to five foot in width in 10 years. Makes it a small, a great tree to handle high heat in small places. Yeah, I would say this is a fun pairing with something like that green twinkles we talked about earlier. Both aren't lace leaves, but they're kind of low and bounding and really showy. I mean, this one looks great in a conifer garden. I've got it up at uh, Hillstone Arboretum up against a rock wall. So you can have that texture going on. It does tend to put on some semi-pendulous branches that tend to spiral out there, making it very unique in its shape. Sherwood Elfin though, just a fun overall plant. Uh, I definitely recommend it for being high heat, for durable, for compact and small. Typically four to five feet, but four to five feet wide, even in a 10 year span. Works zones five through nine. Has shown to be pretty heat tolerant though as well. And it looks great in a big pot. This is one you can put in a big pot where you don't necessarily want a lace leaf that's weeping. You want a more unique shape to it. It's gonna put on some more of those spirals, give you a lot of texture going on, but not necessarily something completely pendulous. Yep. All right, I guess we're down to the last one on the table. We've got Acer Palmatum Asiaki. Now, this is an introduction by our friend Neil Pasulo, uh, also stage name Neil Ramsey. He's an actor, does a lot of cool things. Neil sent me this one, and everybody's been after it. I actually shared it with Talon. Talon liked it a lot, too. Uh, this one can get some yellow shades in it. What it does get consistently, though, is a beautiful border to it with kind of a yellowish eye. In the right lighting, you can get some really nice yellow shades on this one in the early spring, for sure. And pushing that sunlight, you get more of those yellow colors. If you put it in more shade, it will give a little more green effect. You will get some purple border nails around it in the early spring. But the thing that Talon liked most about this tree when we sent it to him was the fall color. And we're starting fall color right now with some yellows with a little bit of orange. And it'll get an intense and a very intense, brighter orange color to it. That's more like that orange pink. And because of that fall color, this is an excellent lace leaf for fall color. It gives a unique shape, a unique color. And 
if you push it in the sunlight, you can get you know those unique characteristics we're talking about with a little more yellow color in the summer as well. Yeah, don't wait on this one. I know a lot of people have been waiting on Asiaki to come back in stock. Uh, it's one we try to offer frequently here at Mr. Maple. We love whenever possible to showcase cool plants from our friends. Definitely check out Asiaki today. Another great one for the container garden. Guys, this would pair really well with something like the Scarlet Princess. There's a lot of them here today that kind of have similar characteristics but are very different. Asiaki pairs amazing if you already have some traditional lace leaves going on in the landscape. You want to add a little bit more flair to the landscape, something slightly different in color pattern. Asiaki makes a great choice for that. So let us know what your favorite tree was here on the table today. We've got a great lineup for you. Now these are just 10 of the 20. Make sure to check your email, should already be out. Check your email now and you'll see what the other 10 trees are on today's 10 at 10. But let's know in the comment section below what's your favorite tree and what's your favorite use for it. So if you're picking something like Teroyama, do you like that one in a basket? Do you like it in the ground? Uh, if you're picking something like a Scarlet Princess, is that something you're putting in a conifer garden? What, what kind of uses are you looking for for each of these? And uh, let us know where you're watching from today as well. So we really appreciate that. Shout out to everybody out there in our international community. We appreciate you guys here from North Carolina. And remember to check out Fast today. Don't just add it to your cart. Our website doesn't hold it for you when you add it to cart. It doesn't hold it for you until you complete that checkout process. You got to order confirmation, and then you got those trees waiting for you at Mr. Maple. So we really appreciate everybody. Remember to jump on at 10 a.m. They're no longer getting listed at 9.59. They're getting listed at 10 a.m. exactly. So jump on there at 10 a.m. and, you know, check out quick. All right, guys, a few new things going on here on Mr. Maple. We've been dropping some merch Mondays. I hope you guys been enjoying that. We're going to be dropping merchandise. Joe and Nigel got it going on. Uh, they're going to be shipping you tons of cool Mr. Maple gear. Guys, buy it up. We'll be adding tons more things. Uh, we're looking to get some more trucker hats. I just ordered some more of the oak leaf truckers that everybody's waiting on. Uh, we do have a lady locally that builds everything for us as far as putting the logos on there. We love supporting that. Uh, so give us a minute to get some of those going, but they'll be coming back. Merch will be dropping every Monday. And, and some things are limited, guys. Not everything we have a million in. We're not a t-shirt company, so we make these here in-house. We bring the things in and then have them uh, printed on. So definitely be checking out our Merch Mondays, but that's not all. We're gonna be doing a giveaway for you guys. So what we're doing here is if you have a t-shirt design uh, for our 2024 ideas, send an email to mrmaplegiveaway at gmail.com. And that's where we're filtering it so that it doesn't get mixed up in all the other emails. We can go through and look at all this t-shirt design people have ideas from. The winner of that is one, the t-shirt's gonna get made. So we're gonna have that on mrmaple.com available for other people to purchase. But we also have an autographed Buckholtz nursery poster by Talon Buckholtz himself. But wait, there's more. We're gonna also be giving away some $50 Mr. Maple gift cards. Guys, we appreciate you participating in this. We're gonna be dropping a ton of t-shirts already. So you might be picking ideas we already have. Be creative with these, be funny. Uh, be something I can wear around my children. I'll tell you that as well. You gotta be able to wear this one. I gotta be able to wear it at church. So don't be shut up with anything you've seen on my shirts. Uh, love you guys. You guys make it so much fun. And I'd love for you to participate in this. Come up with something crazy, fun, and interesting. It needs to be an intellectual property that you own. You can't do something that's, you know, don't be putting Mickey Mouse on the t-shirt. We're not gonna print that. So it's gotta be an original idea by you that's not copyrighted. But we appreciate you guys participating in this. Keep sending those submissions. You might win that Talon Buckholtz signed poster. Guys, those are limited. I mean, we got this idea because Tim and I, the first time we met Talon, got him to sign that poster. And you can get in a little bit of that fun as well by doing this contest. We've got a few of them to give away, so it won't just have to be one of one. But guys, they're very limited. Get those submissions in. As soon as we pick a winner, that's where they're going. And uh, $50 gift card's not a bad prize there either. Be getting those in. We'll be picking them for the 2024 winter. You know, sometime a little after Christmas and trying to get these uh, t-shirts made for you guys so you can purchase the winner's t-shirts as well here on mrmaple.com. So y'all also take advantage of these shipping prices. We just renegotiated our shipping rates, so our FedEx rates shipping to you shrunk drastically, y'all. So All of our rates went down by almost one third. Incredible prices. We ship boxes to California for under $20. We ship boxes in North Carolina for our 2013 rate, guys. We took you back to the future, all right? We Marty McFly'd it. We went back to 2013 shipping prices. When I used to ship a box in North Carolina in 2013, it was $14. We ship boxes to Eastern North Carolina this week for $14. I couldn't even believe it. I was like, that's amazing. So take advantage of those discounted rates, guys. And if there's something you're interested in here, grab it up today on the day's 10 at 10. We appreciate your continued support all winter. People say, hey, when do you quit selling trees? You know what? I like to eat all winter. <laughs> Our employees, they like to eat all winter. My kids, 
they need stuff all winter too. We keep shipping trees year round. Uh, coming up here at the end of the year, uh, we'll be shipping out everything we have. Uh, we'll be also uh, doing some end of the year promotions, so be staying tuned for that. There's a lot of cool things happening here at Mr. Maple. And just keep tuning into our videos. I think you guys are gonna enjoy some of the Buckholtz related content. Seattle, I know a lot of that hadn't even aired yet. From Seattle to Canada to Buckholtz and all in between, we shot a lot of stuff there. We've got enough content to show you videos all the way to March and leave. So y'all take care. God bless. And have a great day.